Everyone's counting on me to cheer them up and give them lots of energy. That, that's just so evil, it doesn't even have to be mentioned. It goes without saying. I to support them and always try my best. It's so much fun to help out. It. Everybody's turned in for the night and mommy and daddy are in bed and maybe there's going to be some special mommy daddy time. I want to do something for you, Onitan said. I guess I'm sad. And not only are they having an erection, but they are seeing it to completion. What's this sticky stuff on me? They play with me until I smell like salty coins and milk. Morning, everyone. Today we will have lots of fun. Ooh. The good Lord knew we're nipping this in the bud right here. You're not going there. All right, fellas, today I'm going to tell you about a few things that I've modified around here, kind of chasing problems. So I'll tell you what the problems were. Tell you how I went about fixing them, and uh, you can take from that what you want. Maybe just a few things to avoid. We'll start with the fish. I had um, poor water quality. The water was dirty. This fish feed is a very high protein commercial feed, and after feeding, I just simply couldn't get those tannins extracted from the water. The, the discoloration, the microsolids uh, were clearly polluting the water. After brainstorming, talking with some other people, the solution was to increase the flow rate of water in the tanks. That has completely solved the problem. Uh, so if you feel like you've got adequate filtration, but your water is still not clean in the fish tanks, uh, increase your flow rate may be, may be the answer. I had fairly low flow rate, so um, I was only changing the tank maybe every hour and 15, hour and 30 minutes, and now it's being changed about every 45 minutes, and that has negated a lot of the issues. Oxygen, dissolved oxygen. A um, buddy of mine let me borrow his dissolved oxygen kit. I, I didn't have a, a meter or a kit. I've been have, having trouble sourcing one here. Um, in any case, I found out that the small fish had, had fine DO. They were sitting at about a seven, uh, which I'm happy with. The, the large fish in the same water, same method of feeding and everything, uh, feeding water that is, water flow, uh, their water was all the way down to four. Uh, turns out fish are pretty fucking good at extracting oxygen from the water. Um, so the answer to that was increasing flow. I'm now top feeding. I'll show you some footage of that. Um, and that is that has helped. In addition to that, I put some bigger air pumps on those stones, and I'm pumping more air into the tanks. Uh, so the combination of the larger air pump um, with the top flow water has increased my DO up to 6.5 is where I was today. Um, we'll check it again tomorrow and see where we're at. So we're up two and a half points. Uh, that's a big improvement from where it was, and the fish are demonstrating that uh, they're, they're eating much more vigorously and things like that. Oxygen plays a big role in fish appetite, um, increases their appetite, their metabolism, and everything else. So if you're looking to extract the most out of your growth rates, then oxygen becomes very, very important. Now I understand why every serious aquaculture venture in the world uses um, PRO2. I, I can't do that here. It's not economically viable. I have a hard enough time sourcing things, so um, we're stuck with what we got. I also did some plumbing to top feed the water. I just mentioned that, but I got away from the Venturi's, got away from high pressure, low flow, and now we're on a high flow, low pressure, and um, we're, we're getting a lot more disturbance of the water as it goes in, and it's breaking up the protein uh, deposits that were sort of coagulating and sitting on the it looked like an oil slick after feeding time with, with the way the water was formed before that um, the fatty, the fat and the food would sort of come to the top of the water and just sit there for hours and I didn't like it. And now that's, it's all being broken down and incorporated into the water and, 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 and being extracted. Um, so don't cut shortcuts on oxygen. Don't cut shortcuts on, don't take shortcuts on water flow. Don't take shortcuts on oxygen. And Biofiltration is another big one. I really, really screwed the pooch on the biofiltration. I didn't have enough of it. I thought, oh, well, I've got outstanding solids extraction. Uh, I can cut corners on biofiltration. Bullshit. Don't do it. Don't do it. You'll be sorry you did. You'll end up having to pay for it later. So now the, the new bio, I've got a 10,000 liter biofilter. And I've only got about 20% of that filled with media. And it's night and day, guys. Real talk.
my ammonia before the new biofilter was incorporated, my ammonia was upwards of eight parts per million. My nitrites were upwards of five parts per million. It was off the chart, up off the API test kit. I don't even know how I have fish. I'm lucky they didn't all die. Um, they weren't eating as they should have been. They were eating maybe 25 to 30 percent of what they should have been eating. Um, they were clearly not happy, but they weren't dying, fortunately. Um, so we immediately, once that problem was identified, I got guys in here to put in a new biofilter, and that what I've got now will handle anything I can throw at it. Um, like I said, I've only got about 20 percent of that biofilter filled with media, and my ammonia is consistently zero. My nitrates are consistently zero. Nitrites, sorry, nitrites are consistently zero, and it's doing what it should be doing. So that's a good thing. Um, just don't take shortcuts, guys. Do your math, figure out what you're supposed to have, and follow the guidelines that are out there um, based on your stocking density. Previous to this, I'd never run high stocking densities. It's kind of like this backyard aquaponics bullshit. You know, you throw in an air stone, it's good to go. You don't really worry about it too much. Um, you start increasing uh, from a commercial perspective or a higher stocking density, these things matter very quickly. They, they matter very quickly. So um, this is just to let you know that I made these mistakes, they're being resolved, but uh, try not to make them yourselves. I mentioned uh, root rot. Root rot in the towers, aquaponically, uh, root rot is fairly uncommon in aquaponics. My understanding that is because of the voluminous amount of beneficial bacteria kind of keep the fungus, root rot is a fungus at bay. Um, with the separation of systems, whether that's got something to do with it or not, uh, it needs to be treated from a hydroponic perspective and apparently I'm the only guy in the entire region that wasn't using what's called trichoderma. Trichoderma over here is very common, all the hydro guys use it. It's a beneficial fungus which uh, once it's introduced to the roots, populates, colonizes on the roots and fights off the bad fungus. Basically it says anything that tries to invade or populate, uh, it's, it's completely decimated by the beneficial um, fungus being trichoderma. Uh, there's also other benefits supposedly to trichoderma, root development uh, overall, uh, germination, things like that. So what I've started doing is germinating my seeds in trichoderma spores and anything that goes into the towers after germination gets an additional trichoderma dip, root dip, and the results so far are, are pretty amazing. So with the root rot issue, my issue was so far gone and so bad, I did a complete system restart. I literally hit the reset button. I killed everything with peroxide, uh, took everything out of the towers, and literally just reset. So. I'm not telling you to do that. You'll have to look at your own situation. It may not be the uh, best solution. Now, funguses are not like bacteria in the sense of bacteria is very waterborne. Funguses don't quite work like that, at least not as efficiently as bacteria kind of floating around in the water. These are things that develop in a spore manner, um, sort of hatch out and then uh, colonize on surface space. So they don't really jump around like like bacteria. They don't have the mobility. Um, and my system was so far gone, ate up with root rot, that it required, literally, in my opinion, a system restart. So that's what we did. The new growth, the new roots are nice, clean, white roots. There's no issues. So we'll cross our fingers and hopefully this uh, beneficial fungus being trichoderma will um, resolve all of those issues. Now. Trichoderma is commonly sold in the West, but they don't call it trichoderma. That's what you're after, that's what you're looking for, but it's pre-packaged, it's given a different brand name, and oftentimes they incorporate a lot of other beneficial funguses and bacteria and things like that. Uh, it looks pretty expensive from what I saw online. Um, the stuff I have cost about, and I overpaid for it, I, I know I did because the shop I bought it from exaggerates their prices, I mean they gotta make money too. but. I paid about six dollars for a little vial of spores. The little vial can then be introduced to cooked rice and then you could, excuse me, propagate it and grow it on your own and then take that, all those spores in the rice, dilute it into like 200 liters of water and then you have 
a diluted water form concentrate of the fungus. Now, I have seen a lot of places suggest that that needs, stuff needs to be refrigerated. I don't know what the lifespan on that stuff is yet. I'm by no means an expert. Uh, I just know that the stuff that I've got, uh, I've got a couple different sources and a couple different quick fixes. One of them was a liquid form, one of them was a powder form, and they both seem to be working. Um, so you guys can do your own research and source what you want to buy and, and all that good stuff if you decide you want to do it. Uh, but essentially, it's not a quick fix. You can't really fix a problem. It's a preventative measure. So, and, and again, it's not really waterborne. So you can't just go and throw a bunch of powder or di uh, diluted uh, liquid form into your system and expect everything to recover from root rot. Um, this is something that needs to be applied to the roots as it goes into your system and you're sort of inoculating the fungus onto the roots and allowing it to colonize. And so far it seems to be performing beautifully. Okay, I think that's it for all the pro tips that I have for you today. I'll go over and shoot a little bit of footage on the tomatoes for the contest guys because I know they want to see pictures and they're due for them. So we'll just do it this way instead. Quick rundown on the contestant uh, tomatoes. Um, I gotta try to remember who everybody is. Call them. Your plant's looking pretty good uh, on the left. The one on the right, well the left plant's got fruit set. Uh, the first and second tiers. This one's probably gonna have lots of fruit set. That's your third flower cluster. This is your fourth, but that doesn't count. Here's the deal guys, if you all agree we can give the option to negate the first fruit cluster because all the other clusters have many more flowers than the first across the board. Um, if you want to discuss that option in the general area of the forum, we can determine if that's going to be uh, okay or not, and then we can just remove the bottom cluster or whatever you want to do. Your second plant is not looking that good. Uh, you got some kind of funk going on here. And I'm probably not going to be able to get it with the lighting. I'm not sure what's going on. Uh, it doesn't look very good at the top, the new grow, growing tip. But your first, second, third flowers are basically more or less unaffected. Uh, Luke, your plants have done much better since you increased your water timings. Uh, if you want some of this bottom foliage removed, let me know. You're still in the process of uh, setting fruit but the plants are looking fine. Thomas, your plants are looking fine as well. If you want some of these bottom leaves removed, let me know. Um, yeah, it's coming along, no issues. Tardale, your plants are freaking massive. It just like in the last week out of nowhere, they exploded, so you can see how tall they are. When your plants reach the top of the wire, the top of the support string, I'm going to top them. I'm not fucking lowering and leaning and all that shit because I'll break your plant, guaranteed. So, and it doesn't matter because only the first three trusses count towards your final weight. And you have to choose, the, the, the only one that counts is the higher of the two plants. That's why you're each given two plants. Um, but yours are looking fine. And... Hydra Swift Rob, I can't remember your new username, but your plants are looking good too. I did remove some lower leaves. If you want me to keep removing more lower leaves, look at where your fruit is in comparison to where the leaves are, and let me know on the forum if you want more stuff removed. But they are looking um, very good. Oh, there's a sucker. So I've been actively suckering and all that good stuff. There's no insect issues as of now. Few mealy bugs here and there. I just uh, remove them manually and kill them, uh, and all that good stuff. So, there you have it. Okay, guys, that's gonna wrap it up for today. Um, always like and subscribe and all that good stuff. I appreciate the support. I love your comments very much. So give me some of those as well, and we'll see you soon.